So we're headed to Denver for our son's wedding, which is super exciting. And we're driving there campground to campground. Eloise still doesn't understand that she doesn't have to bark at every person that walks past our campsite, but she'll learn. So we're headed to Denver for our son's wedding, which is super exciting. And we're driving there campground to campground. And today we are in uh, Daniel Boone National Forest in, I think we're in Kentucky still. And, but the funny thing is that we are the only ones in this campground, which is a little creepy, but it's super pretty here. And I don't have to worry about barking dogs, bothering neighbors. Lie down. Good girl. So we are in Shawnee National Forest. I think we're in Shawnee National Forest in southern Illinois. And national forests are really nice. Um, they're, they seem to be really pretty and pretty quiet, which is kind of cool. Uh, something tells me when we hit Rocky Mountain National Park, which is where the wedding that we're going to is, uh, it will be pretty busy. After driving for three days, this is our third day driving, we were going to stay here for two days. And it's a beautiful place. I would totally stay here for two days. The problem is that it's gonna rain all day tomorrow. So if it's gonna rain all day and we'd be stuck in the van anyway, we might as well be stuck in the van and driving. Get hot. I'm off for a month. And the reason that I'm off for a month is that the big company that I work for, whose name I don't mention, um, gives its employees a sabbatical when they have worked for that company for 15 years. And I've worked for them for 15 years. Um, and at the same time, they have pretty much stopped teaching, at least in the area where I live. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do on a go forward is just before COVID, I started my own company. And then, of course, nothing happened with that. So I'm thinking about leaving the company that I've worked for for a long time, or at least reducing how much I work for them, um, and working on my own thing, or relocating to someplace else where I can work for the big company, whose name I don't mention, and, uh, and maybe I can teach there for them. Or maybe I'll just start over. I don't know. So for this month, I'm trying to figure that out. I'm giving it some thought. And helping me do that is Eloise. So in the Let's Go video, I mentioned that I have two problematic dogs and I wanted to talk about that a little bit more. This is Eloise and really she is the problematic dog. Sorry, did that upset you? Um, but here's what makes her problematic. She um, doesn't know how to invite play. And so when she sees someone that she wants to play with, which is everyone, she growls and barks. She thinks that that's how you invite play. And so that looks really scary, but she has never hurt anyone. She roughhouses with us, and sometimes when she's in pain, she snaps at us, but she's never hurt someone other than us, I guess I should say. Um, and she's also very regimented. And so that means that she goes to bed at seven o'clock sharp every night. Um, and she gets up between six and seven every morning. And right after she gets up, it's time to eat breakfast. And then right after that, we have to eat breakfast. And she'll bark at us if we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. If I'm not cooking dinner at the right time, she gets upset. But that can be problematic on a road trip when not everything can go by the clock. She also really likes her couch time, as you can see. The couch in the van was built so that she would have a couch to sleep on, and of course so far she hasn't slept on it. And we bought this couch so that she could lay down on it. So that's Eloise, in a nutshell. Our other dog, Matilda, is really not that problematic. The most problematic thing about her is she gets nervous around kids. And because um, both of them are pretty cute, kids want to come and pet them. She plays way too rough for little kids, 
and Matilda gets nervous and again doesn't snap at them but makes snappy noises like she'll snap her teeth together to say hey I'm not comfortable with this so that's why the two of them are problematic so both of our dogs are English Bull Terriers people know Bull Terriers from a couple of different uh, media sources and so depending on your age you may know the English Bull Terrier as the target dog or Spuds McKenzie if you're older than that and if you're older than the Spuds McKenzie generation you know them as General Patton's dog and so those are the three references that we get but when your dog yes my girl looks like the target dog everyone wants to come and say hello but she gets a little too rough for people so that's our problematic dogs And so that's where I am. I am driving to Denver for my son's wedding with two problematic dogs while contemplating my future in the outdoor education world and trying to figure out what the next year is gonna look like. COVID seemed easy compared to this.